Hello, hello there and welcome back to War Thunder. Today's video is about earning big silver lines in War Thunder and let's go right into part one which is motivation and preparation before we go to the execution of the plan. Hence the video is a bit longer but please give me time to talk you through and I want to start with some post battle result screenshots which by themselves look already impressive but that was you know okay-ish. I thought to myself, wow, that, that, that's really cool, but can I actually make more than this? And the answer was yes. Look at this. Immediately a jump, a big jump into yeah, half the million silver line region. And I thought to myself, oh boy, that's good, but can, can I do better? Can I do better? And I cranked it up. I cranked it up big time really big time up until I ended with this battle and then I thought to myself okay screw it let's make a video of this so again let me just summarize this today's video will be a bit longer since it will be an in-depth guide on how to earn silver lines and it can be done by not just people with a premium account and a premium vehicle I'll show you the mathematics upon what I base my grinding guide on later. And so we have two parts, motivation and preparation, part one, and part two being the execution of the plan. So you'll find some timestamps in the video description down below and in the comment section. And talking about the comment section, I want you to watch this video and then try it out for yourself. And after you have come across that this is actually something really great, not just share it with your friends and clanmates, but also coming back to the video and please comment on if this has helped you and if it has helped you, which I really think it will, let me know how much it has helped you. And also feel free to join my Discord to really go for it, to play together with friends in the preparation part and also the execution part of the plan. And I, there is so much to talk about, right? But what is actually my motivation to share this video with you? Because yeah, cool, it will be a video that creates a lot of views and likes, etc. And to be honest, I also did some polls, but there were just to test the water a little bit. But it was this guy. This guy and what he had to say that really made me say, okay, I do the video now. Let's have a look. The third way is through Silver Lion sales, which are accumulative throughout the year. Now, obviously you're not gonna buy Silver Lions directly. You're gonna buy Golden Eagles, then have them transferred over. But most of the time when I'm buying Golden Eagles, I am buying them to have them transferred so I can purchase the vehicles or continue playing the vehicles that I enjoy. Now, while that is annoying, it's very important for Gaijin. Because if you look at this, they get premium sales, a big check around holiday time, and then they have to put a lot of money and a lot of effort into these new vehicles around big updates. Silver Lion sales are the only thing that they can rely on to have a constant money flow between the major updates and between holiday times. All right, I'm going to erase this, but just keep this in the back of your mind because it's very important as we move on. And you know what? He's not the only one. So one of my polls was the simple question, have you ever exchanged gold needles for silver lines in War Thunder? Over 5,000 people participated. And of those, over a third have claimed to having done this at least once. And that is a substantially bigger amount than I thought that people would actually do in War Thunder. So this is actually a problem in War Thunder, right? So the second poll that I made some six days ago where over 7,000 of you participated was the simple question, what your greatest problem with civil lines in the game is. And well, over half of you said, unsurprisingly, that the purchasing costs of the vehicles together with the cost of putting in into a crew in the first place, together with on top of it, the expert qualification is the biggest cost factor, unsurprisingly. Then 38% of you said repair costs. If you think about something like a TU4, B29, Heinkel 177, just to mention the bombers, not mentioning here the top tier battleships that cost up to 45,000 silver line repair costs. And you know, there are also pretty expensive tanks that really have high repair costs. Yeah, I get this. 
However, less than 10% mentioned that the biggest problem is to get silver lines in the first place. That's a little bit of a problem for me because I cannot lower the repair costs of said vehicles and I also cannot give you a discount on in the purchasing price of the vehicles. Yes, there is the tip that you can get uh, older vehicles um, in terms of release date with a 50% discount, tech tree vehicles that is, if you purchase them at certain dates, for example, Victory Day or when War Thunder's birthday is in autumn, I think uh, around Halloween, then you can get them 50% off, but you get no discount for the cost of getting them into a crew or the expert qualification. What I can increase is your silver line income. Again, this is what the video is all about. Let's now swiftly move on to the first interesting part of this video, and that is the theory of calculation. And if you look at this stat card here, look at the very bottom of it. The maximum vehicle research efficiency goes for rank 1 to rank 7 for the Leopard A1 A1 L44 as a rank 6 premium. But that is more specific on the RP, which goes in this case up to 678%. Now we are more interested in this video in the 420% silver lines and there is some weird calculation at the very bottom of the right hand side. 1.4 times 2.0 times 100% plus 50%. What do the specific parts mean? Those factors are very important to understand. The 1.4 is the base modifier of the vehicle, with the 2.0 being then the premium specific one. By the way, if you ever get a for free test drive on a premium, you don't get this 2.0 in the test drive. Um, then the 100% is a necessary basis for every vehicle in the game for the calculation to work. And then the 50% comes from the premium account. So that is quite a big boost. So this then brings up to the 420%. But we can get more out of this. So here I have a part of an Excel spreadsheet for you and relax, I'm with you. Yes, I'm German, so I like numbers, but in all honesty, there is method to the madness. I have here three premium tanks and one tech tree tank, the T3485. And I'll talk you through where the basis of the calculations really kicks off. Let's start with the modifiers. The Cobra King has a marked modifier of 1.4 times 2.0. First of all, this is the same as with the previously mentioned Leopard A1 A1 L44, the German high tier premium tank. It's also the highest civil line modifier that you can get for any tank in realistic battles. The values vary for arcade and simulator respectively. The XM1, despite being significantly more expensive and high in battle rating, doesn't have a higher but a lower modifier of 1.3 times 2.0. Not that much lower, but we'll get there in a moment. The T3485 as a tech tree tank has amongst the tech tree tanks the highest civil line modifier with 1.5. The majority of tanks are lower, but there are also quite a few tanks throughout the nations that share this highest tech tree civil line modifier with the T3485. Without a premium account, you have at best 280% and for a tech tree tank at best 150%. With a premium account, you have 50% more, 420 and 225 for the Cobra King and the T3485 respectively. Now, the third row is really where the quintessence of my statement goes and where the calculations really start to make fun. If we apply now a 300% silver line booster, that actually quadruples the silver line income. So we go for the Cobra King from 280% to 1120% and for the T3485 from 150% to 600%. That means that if you get your hands on a 300% silver line booster, I'll talk about where you get them from on a regular basis in just a moment 
for the T thirty four eight for the T thirty four eighty five, that means um, you actually earn two times as much uh, with this three hundred percent silver line booster than you would earn with the Cobra King without a premium account and without a booster, despite the Cobra King being a premium tank. Now, if we combine a premium account and a 300% silver line booster, yes, it is even higher, but not by that much. In particular, it is 12.5% more, not 50% more. If we then add on top of the best scenario so far, something called anti mech I'll talk about this also in just a minute. So suddenly we get ridiculous numbers. 3,780% for the Cobra King and 2,025% for the T3485. But we can do even better. Watch that. So if we now have a 500% booster plus a premium account for the Cobra King, we now go to 1,820% and 975% for the T3485. The anti mac gets us up to almost 5,500% for the Cobra King and nearly 3,000% for the T3485. The biggest silver line booster that I know of in War Thunder is a 900% booster. You get those rather rarely, but sometimes you get them. So with a premium account, we go to almost 3,000% for the Cobra King and still 1,575% for the T3485. Apply an anti mech to this and we get almost 9,000% for the Cobra King and 4,725% for the T3485. That is ridiculous and... You're right, that is rather rare, but it is possible. And even without a premium account, it wouldn't be that much lower. The bigger the booster, the less the premium account matters for that one battle. In absolute values, if we take the Cobra King as the unit one, that means that with the T3485 at start, we can earn just over half of what we can earn with the Cobra King. However, if we then apply a 300% booster, it's more than twice as much. And uh, with a premium account, it is nearly two and a half times that. The anti mag then gets us up to seven times that value. Now, if we go to a rather rare event, a 900% booster and we really feel like it and also activate the premium account and the anti mech we can almost go to 17 times that. But that is ridiculous, rather rare, but technically still possible. Those are the numbers. Now, how does it look for planes? Here it gets rather interesting because the highest civil line modifier has the F-89D as a premium, but it also shares it with quite a few other premium planes. And it has 2.7 times 2.0. That's almost twice what we can get with the best of the tanks. And also, we get a substantially higher best tech tree plane modifier of 3.8. In this case, representative for some of the rather infamous heavy bombers B-29, TU-4 and Heinkel-177. But also quite a few fighters have this modifier. Usually, hint hint, they have rather high repair costs for obvious reasons in just a moment. The Focke Wolf 190D13 still has a respectable 2.5 times 2.0 and the Yak-38 as a premium jet falls off by quite a bit compared to other premiums with quote unquote only 2.0 times 2.0. So with a heavy bomber, you can earn almost as much as with such a premium. So really watch out for those modifiers. By the way, with certain economy updates, those modifiers can get nerfed. So if we then apply a 300% silver line booster to a non-premium account for the F-89D, we immediately start to kick off with 2160%. That's quite a high value. But also some tech tree planes go 1520 and 
As I said, you have a steady supply of a 300% booster on a daily basis. Now, the rest of the calculations are there for you to pause the video and look through them yourself, but let me just um, quickly go into this. This is just the basis and it's just for realistic battles, but it gives you a hint where we are going. Now, the last vehicle class that I really want to show with you is then ships. And in this case, the list is a bit longer. Now, surprise, surprise, the USS Cowell, the US battle rating 4.3 premium destroyer, has with a 2.5 times 2.0 modifier, something that is more in the region of planes, which is a deathmatch mode, rather than what you would expect from a mode where you can respawn, just like with Tank RB. So, there it gets a bit interesting. So we start immediately with 500%. The Z20 is not far behind and there are also some lower battle rating ships just like the Type 1939 T31, the Type 1924 Jaguar that share this kind of modifier of 2.5 times 2.0 with the Cowell. The Project 7 u Stroini is also a very old premium, no longer available to 2.2 times 2.0, the IGN Udachi also 2.3 times 2.0. Now let's talk about the three green marked ones, the HMS Tobruk D37 and the HMS Armada D14. They have modifiers of 2.4 and 2.1 respectively. Those are British battle rating 4.3 Tech 3 destroyers and the J class HMS Jervis is a rather cheap premium for quote unquote only a thousand gold needles with a modifier of 1.9 times 2.0 that you can in theory purchase right now. And um, I'll really go, go back to this a few more times in this video. Because if you have the users Cowell and the Z20 Carl Gauss, then you think that they have fallen off. Oh no, because with the recent split of the tech trees, uh, you know, distinguishing now between the um, Blue Water Fleet and the Coastal Fleet, some modifiers were adapted. And so with the British, now you can rule the waves. Although the big master of the seas for me is still the USS Cowell. And as you can see, now we're also getting there. With 300% L booster, we're getting for the Cowell to 2000%. And even for the tech trees, we're in the region of 1000%. So that is quite a bit compared this to tanks, uh, your head and shoulders above. And yeah, I think I have to let the cat out of the sack here. The 1 million battle that you saw, the post battle results screenshot, was actually with the USS Cowell with a 500% silver line booster, a premium account, the premium status of the Cowell, and also something called anti mech But even if you get only half of that, so you know, that would still be ridiculous. And let me tell you, it's not as extreme with the anti mac as the numbers here might indicate. It's still massive, but not quite that massive. Now the question is obviously, how do I get my hands on those mentioned boosters? And as you can see right here, I have acquired quite a few silver line boosters and uh, there are some with a timer and some without. So where do you get the ones with the timer from? And there are quite a few ways. The first one is obviously from daily logins. You just get your hands then on from time to time some of the biggest uh, trophies and amongst them you also can get a uh, yeah up to 500% silver line boosters, sometimes multiple of them, which is quite nice. Another way of acquiring boosters is if you go to the Warborn shop and purchase yourself those special tasks. If you obviously then have fulfilled other tasks in order to be able to purchase them. And if you fulfill them, then you can get a Civil Line booster as well. 
The next possibility is that if you have acquired enough war bonds, you can actually purchase yourself some loot boxes basically, and again for free. And the one that I'm after costs you 400 war bonds. That's quite a bit. But if you do the lottery, you can come across up to 900% boosters. And in this case, I purchased myself four boxes in quick succession, got a 500% silver line booster from the first one, 100% booster from the second one. And let's roll the dice again. And we come across another 500% silver line booster. And for the fourth time in a row, we then can roll the dice for the last time. Then I have used up my uh, uh, war bonds and it's a 500% RP booster. Still, that's quite a lot. And a lot of you are not really aware of how useful they'll get. The last and most controversial is probably the method of playing Assault Air Arcade and Assault Ground Arcade. And you can get reward once a day for each of those two game modes an Assault Trophy. Alongside some universal backups for the respective vehicle class, you also can earn yourself a 300% booster, which is guaranteed if you win. And then it's down to RNG if it is a civil line booster or an RP booster. And there is also some talking about a third mode coming up after all those years, and that will be ships. At least this was kind of hinted in a recent Q&A, and that was down to one of my suggestions actually. And so in theory, you could earn three of them. So it is a brutal mode. It's not easy. It's arcade and very often you have teammates that have no idea what they're doing and I probably make a video about this at some point. But again, you get a 300% civil line booster and that's the key and the time investment is worth it. So finally for completing the theory part of the video, which has already taken an insane amount of time, there are only two items missing. The first one are the orders. And out of the seven, three are very interesting or uninteresting. Check of all trades, domination, and be the best, earn you at best 15,000 extra civil lines, independent from the booster and or premium account or vehicle that you play. The, boost, uh, the orders, Avenger and Bland Hunt, actually are very interesting for RRB if you need to hunt down the last enemy player and you have no idea where he is. The reward is not really big, but the scouting exploit is massive. It should be well known. Also very well known, at least for long-term viewers, is the following order, the AAA. And the target type is air slash aircraft. It works for both bots and players for both aircraft and helicopters. Upon activation, you have a five minute timer that ticks down. At the end of the timer or when the match ends till that point, the order AAA is fulfilled by one player on both teams that earned the most kills, whereas the highest kill number is the um, thing that matters. And so in terms of amount of kills, a player kill is equal to a bot kill, but a player kill is in terms of civil lines much more profitable than a bot kill. And I went in great detail about this in a video two years ago, which is one of the most successful videos that I did ever. And then there is this times three for arcade battles and realistic battles. So the amount of civil lines that you earn from the kills you did in that time period gets tripled on top of what you earned. And if the base value is already boosted by, hmm, let's say, a 300% civil line booster, that earns you then the ridiculous amounts of silver lines that I've shown you in the videos two years ago and also in the screenshots earlier in this video. And then we come to the order that is the core essence of this video, the Antimac order. Now, the first thing to understand is that the target type ground is a bit deceiving. And again, Gaijin had a little bit of a hiccup because they forgot about naval forces. Funnily enough, you not just can kill bots and 
players that are in tanks, in PO boxes, artillery positions, howitzers, etc. But also any sort of floating device, let's say hmm, a cargo ship, a bot destroyer, a bot cruiser, or a patrol boat, or a player um, commanded destroyer cruiser battleship. And that is the interesting part, because there are regions in War Thunder where the matches get really kill intense if you're in a good ship and uh, you have good modifiers. For example, hmm, the Cowell. So the cat is out of the bag. That's how I did the big amounts of um, half a million civil line games and up to a million. So this is the one that you need to use. But there is one more thing. I know it's incredible, but there are also something called wagers. Now forget about the Golden Eagle wagers. We are going straight to the Civil Line wagers. And the first one is the Destroy 10 Units wager. So in order to fulfill one of the stages out of 10, you have to kill 10 players actually. Except if you're playing realistic battles or simulator battles, then a kill gets counted twice. That means you only have to kill five people per match and you can miss out 10 times. So this is really cool. And upon activation, you get asked if you make a stake. And I would make the maximum stake because after 10 battles, you can earn yourself on top of all of this independent if you have a premium account or not, or if you have a premium vehicle or not, or a booster or not, or a order or not, you get yourself another half a million civil lines. And if you are just, you know, grinding anyway, why not get yourself half a million on top of this? Now the Thunderer Wager and the Hero of the Sky Wager, they are not that easy to fulfill and I personally wouldn't go after them. The Wingman Wager is something if you're getting constantly really unlucky and you have all the kill assists in the world. And the Mission Maker Wager, Oof, absolutely no. But the best squad wager, if you really play with people a lot, let's say on my Discord, and you are grinding as a set anyway, and you want to win as many uh, battles as possible, the best squad is sticking close together and killing stuff. And again, half a million, I would not say no any day of the week. However, only one wager can be activated at a time. The wing breaker wager is also something that I would not really go after, except if you're a good pilot, but if you're a really good pilot, you don't need civil lines in the first place. The battle victory wager only gives you a quarter of a million, which I think is quite disappointing and you only can miss out of this uh, three times. And then there is the destroy the five units wager. That is really interesting because in realistic battle, that only means you need to get three kills. And upon activation, you get again asked if you make the 10,000 civil lion stake. And after three battles, you get another 100,000 civil lions on top of this. So finally, all the things have been brought together. And this is now the basis where you can earn civil lions big time for free in War Thunder. And you know what? Let's, let's test this. Let's have a battle. Let's see what's going on. And um, I show you a battle that I just played a few hours ago before I started editing this video. I hope you enjoy. And here we are in the user's Cowell on the map Island Bay. And this is one of those things that I actually don't like that you spawn less than eight kilometers from enemy destroyers. But I am in a Cowell, which is a Fletcher class, and I just hacked them to pieces. My aim was a bit rusty in this battle, so excuse that. I activated a 300% Silver Line booster and tried to just uh, get in good damage on the first target. And immediately I activate the Order anti mech and I get the first kill. In the left hand side you can see anti mech and I already got one frag accounted to me. So that is kind of, um, you know, used to it and I had it suggest that you would train this. So um, I shortened this a bit down for you. And we can admire the last 27 seconds of the Entermec order. So basically four and a half minutes later. And uh, I already acquired six frags. Now 
that was not the best that I've ever did with this thing, to be honest. And I think that uh, you can, under certain circumstances, do even better. But again, I'm showing off what is, um, you know, possible and I'm showing kind of the average battle. So there you briefly saw it, 227,000 civil lion extra regardless of win or lose. Now, if you win, you get an extra 67% uh, silver lines compared to a loss. But, you know, on top of everything, getting an extra 227,000 silver lines, that's enormous. Another five minutes later, I am about to cap the point and kill somebody. And that was a 36,000 silver line care package for my wallet in just a couple of seconds. And this is something that you can do with the Kowal. But let's talk for real here. If you don't have the Kowal and you don't have the German Z20, you still can get for a mere thousand golden eagles the J class. And that is a very good British ship together with a decent lineup of the two battle classes that everybody can get. You will not get the sheer as metric ton of civil lines that we're about to get in this battle but you can get an equal amount if not more kills and now let's have a feast for our eyes with the post battle results would you look at that that's three quarters of a million seven hundred and fifty four thousand civil lines the question is obviously how long would you take on average to get that amount of civil lines with normal grinding. This was just a 20 minute battle. And so let's have a look at the line mission objectives and orders. That is an additional 227,000 civil lines and the reward for winning is another 200,000 upon which 150,000 is the extra plus 76% on top of the mission objectives and orders. So we're looking more in the region of nearly 400,000 civil lines accommodating to the order anti-mech in this battle. That's the math behind it and regardless how you pronounce it that is addictive the following two screenshots should illustrate that first i got battles with more kills here in this case 22 if you combine aircraft and ships and got only 713,000 civil lines because a good portion of them was bots and then this screenshot with the million civil lines and that was with a 500 percent booster and the order anti-mech activated and you could see how many i got from you know the lottery with the war bonds i think i have now delivered can you imagine what i can do with a 900 percent booster that's insane right and 900 percent boosters are possible to get <laughs> and with your brains formally blasted and exploded I hope you enjoyed this video and you give it a like and also that you return someday to share with us your exploit grinding of civil lines. Remember, you can do this with tanks, with aircraft. I have chosen for myself to use a premium ship and to get to really ridiculous amounts of civil lines. But also if you have matches with 300,000 civil lines, that is outright most possible with tech tree ships and um, I will show you one of those battles at some point if you are interested. That's it for me today. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please give it a like with it. Subscribe if you want to see more and we'll see each other on the battlefields in the skies and on the waves of War Thunder.